one. You are watching Sipping Off the Cuff on TequilaAficionado.com. I'm Alex Perez. I'm Mike Morales uh, here in San Antonio. And, and Alex, you're out there in the Area 51. Southern California. Southern Cal. How hot is Southern Cal right now? It's, it's nice. It's the beginning of, the beginning of summer. Yeah, well, yeah. That's uh, those of us who, those of you who are watching us, uh, we're very close to the the twenty first of June, I think, and uh, yeah, that's so that's tomorrow, isn't it? <laughs> Somewhere. Uh, yeah, I keep forgetting what day. Where, where am I? Um, it's it's muggy and hot in San Antonio, but uh, the uh, uh, the Spurs had their their welcome home parade. Yeah, on the river walk, and traffic was murder the last couple of days, and I, the Kings had to have had, had, yeah. Yeah, so at least we have something in common. Not, you know, I, I'm still rooting for anybody in L.A., but, you know, when in, when in San Antonio, this is the only professional team they have here, the city just went bananas. I think there were like 70,000 people that went to the Alamo Dome for that. for that. That's crazy. And then on the river walk, if you didn't get there by noon, all the restaurants were packed because a lot of those restaurants on that river walk face the, the river, of course. And that they go through they go down on barges and that's where the, the literally the parade goes down the river. And it, I guess it wound up at the Alamo Dome. So it was crazy. It was it was yeah, ridiculously nuts. But tonight, to celebrate, we got somebody that's Black and gold now. Cabo Wabo. Cabo Wabo. And uh, the folks at, um, at Campari were nice enough to send us a, a full set, so we'll be doing the Blanco Reposado and Añejo separately. Looking now, forward. this is the new look. You have the old bottles, correct, in your in your archives, in, lo, in Los Archivos? What are the old bottles, yeah. What, show, show everybody what they look like. Look at that. What they used to look like. Oh, my gosh. That's That's a... And that's the classic bottle, man. That's the. Uh... Hey, what was the gnome number on that on that old bottle? Good question. I was just gonna look at it. The gnome on this one is. Let's see. Fourteen twenty six. Fourteen twenty six. Impulsura rumbo, 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 rambo, rambo. Rumbo. That's right. Rumbo. Yeah. Now, see, when I first the the tequila that changed my life came from that distillery and it was called Zafarrancho and I, I remember going to Juarez uh, when it was safe to do that years ago when I was still living in New Mexico and I bought a bottle of Zafarrancho turned out that was the same distillery where that Cabo Wabo was being made uh, I discovered that somewhere along the line either either before that or after there was there was a Cabo Wabo produced at El Viejito Distillery and it's like a like a bisque. It's made out of a bisque or something. Or this one. Yeah, I think it. I don't know if it was before or after. I I, I want to say it's before. And but the the tequila that made that you know that everybody grew up you know liking Cabo Wabo was was that one. Um, and this one now is a known fourteen forty, which is uh, the new distillery, which is. Uh, San Nicolas, and, and it's one of our favorite distilleries, Alex. Yes, um, sir. Now, you, for those of the folks who have heard Alex's um, uh, his his uh, feature with with Sammy, the founders feature. What can you remember any of this? Because I you you met him just as he was launching that that brand. He was he was featuring it at every concert and. Where did you, where did you want, where was that interview? That was in, that was in Las Vegas. That okay. was actually at the restaurant bar, restaurant and bar show in Vegas, probably maybe 2000, back in 2000. It had to have been like, because it, it's like a 10 year old uh, uh, recording, I think yeah. that we recently, if you haven't heard it, you can, you can find it on our website. Uh, was, Alex's founder. It was a micro cassette. Yeah. Well, we we yeah. transferred it to digital, and so it's a there's a it's a digital it's a, it's an audio uh, interview, but we have we digitized it, and, and it's on our YouTube and on the website also. Yeah, it was it was interesting. He's very unpretentious, very down to earth. Um, didn't have too much time. Actually, that interview I had that I conducted with him actually was on my way walking back 
with an entourage that was following him, <laughs> following us <laughs> on the way out of the show, uh, back to his, I think, I think he got into a limo. But wow. They, they originally had a, a slotted time spot for us, but, you know, you get so busy at that show with, you know, all the things that they want you to do. And yeah. He was signing bottles and that went over time. Unfortunately, I didn't get I didn't get a signed bottle that was promised to me. Ah. Oh. Yet, you know that chunk of time where we walked, and you know he was in his flip flops, t-shirt, shorts, <laughs> and, and uh, I asked him about that, and he just explained it's the the Cabo Wabo lifestyle. So, very very interesting. I actually had a chance to interview him a second time in in Beverly Hills. What they had a show! In fact, we got to dig up. There's a video of that. Uh, I think we need to have that on our on our website, there, boss. Uh, how about you dig that up and and we'll we'll post it, you know? Because there's, there's a video of that. There's photos of that. That was a nice uh, a, a nice quick little piece too when he was uh, talk, you know talking about Cabo Wabo. Did he remember talking to you at the nightclub and bar show? What's that? Did he remember talking to you previously at the nightclub yes, and bar? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he was. Maybe he, he's been following us all this time. I don't know. Well, you know, he's a smart guy. He's a. He's a. I know he's a wine connoisseur. You know, he in, in, in his house in Cabo. We've seen, is his house in Cabo or his house in, in Hawaii? He has wine cellars. The guy, unbeknownst to a lot of his fans, the guy's a wine connoisseur. He he was buying bottles of of expensive wines, you know, and keeping them in his cellar. He has he has a palate. He has a good palate. He's a cook too. I think he's the chef when it comes to family and stuff. He cooks, so this guy is a you know a very versatile uh, guy. I've always liked the way he he comes across on the interviews because it, it even in print because he's very he sounds very genuine and he says the same yeah. thing all the time. He doesn't he doesn't you know vary. It's not like you know five years from now you're going to hear him say something else. It's always the same. It's always the same. And and uh, yeah, very, very simple guy. Very but the tequila simple. has changed. Now, um, um, I I think if I if I if I mentioned to you that like I say, there's there's evidently there was a, a previous version of Cabo Wabo uh, that was related to Los Soles tequila. It was almost as if Los Soles was the was the Mexican version of Cabo Wabo. All right. And, and anyway, uh, eventually we all know the story. Sammy sold the brand for uh, initially $80 million and then an additional $20 million after he sold that completely. So about $100 million. Um, Campari bought the brand and they bought a new distillery. They bought San Nicolas, which at, at, a, at a time, Alex, you and I, um, we, we liked um, uh, one of the tequilas that came out of there was... What was which one? Espolón. Espolón. Espolón and Corazón and were, Corazon. and were were the two that were, that were our our favorites. Right. And uh, Corazón has since moved. I think Espolón is still made there, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah, I think so. Um, and, and then Cabo Wabo was was moved to 1440, and of course it's got the new label and all that. Uh, what I do know is it's the same uh, master distiller. Uh, his name is uh, Cirilio Oropesa. Oropesa, yeah. And, and um, this brand is produced using the Mozart method. They still play classical music. Now, I, I, wanted, I, I wanted to try the, the Blanco tonight, Alex, because, you know, I had, you and I both had Cabo Wabo before. Um, there was a point in its history, I think right before Sammy sold the brand initially, where the quality had suffered completely. And I think that had a lot to do with the fact that the, the distillery was just too small and couldn't handle the, you know, the demand. Right. Excuse me. So um, there, at some point, it was getting a lot of bad reviews for the flavor profile. And this was just before he sold it. Um, and I, and I know that when I, when I had it, it didn't taste like Zafarancho did. Zafarancho was really hot and peppery. And, and the original Cabo Wabo to me was not, I don't know if you have any flavor notes or if you remember what it used to taste like. Um, 
you know, it, it's yeah. been what, you know, over 10 years. Yeah. 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 Um, so we'll just go with this and, you know, it's, it's, it's a, we, I've been to the distillery twice. I know that it's a, a state grown agave. Distillery. Yeah. It, it is beautiful. It, uh, one of, one of my favorites. Yeah, you were that was you were there too initially. I think you were there before I was actually. That was when uh, um, Espolon actually owned it. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, I forget and what the gentleman's was, name just is. Just coming out with Corazon. Uh, at uh, last time I was there. Yeah, that, that when I was there it was the only two that were being produced there, and, and one other one I think, but. Um, you know, this has got a pretty color, though, Alex. It's, yeah, it's kind of, yeah. It's uh, it's very clean and clear. It's very clean. It's uh, it's not it's not not bright like platinum, but it's yeah, very very clean, very um, very clear. And you got the um, the legs and and the, what do you call the little uh, uh, specks on the glass, which is a little different than what you usually see. Yeah, legs and tears. Tears, yeah. Or a string of pearls, some people like to call Perfect. them. I, you yeah. know. It's not too runny. I remember Espolon, especially the, the darker Espolons, were, were a lot runnier. I mean, uh, uh, they, they, they clung to the glass. It was more syrupy. That's what I meant to say. Or more uh, viscosity to it. Yeah, more viscosity. And, and this Blanco uh, is not. Obviously, it's Cabo Wabo. It needs to have its own separate flavor profile. Right. It's got a nice nose to it. And you just opened that bottle, didn't you? I just opened it. Again. Yeah. You know, for those of us who have been to San Nicolas, you know that they have huge, huge fermentation tanks, you know, 40,000 liters. It's it's a it's a it's a wonderful factory, um, but they as I said they still they still use the the Mozart method the way they were making Espolón and Corazón, they they now make Cabo Wabo that way. It's got a beautiful bouquet, a little floral, the agave notes coming through. They, they, they use autoclaves there, so they don't have any brick ovens or anything like that. They, they have huge autoclaves. Yeah. In fact, one of my favorite pictures is a full autoclave that I took. Mmm. 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 -hmm. Mmm. Mmm. You'll excuse us. We... We have a few of these to do, so we spit. <laughs> That's nice. It's really sweet, Alex. There's nothing. You know, um, if I can, if I can pull out and remember what what Cabo Wabo used to taste like, it was, it wasn't anything special. You know, it didn't have the zing that Zaparrancho had. There wasn't that much pepper in it, but since it's moved to I honestly want to say that this is a much more improved tequila now that Campari did the right thing. They, 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 they not only bought the brand, but they, they bought a distillery, which is a very smart move. And, and I really feel that, that the tequila is way much more improved than what it used to be. Um, it's nice Highlands Agave. It's not... You know, it doesn't pretend to be anything else. It's actually kind of sweet on the on the intake. It's, it's sweet on the palate. They actually quote to my palate. It's got a nice finish to it. A little 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 hot, a little spicy. Mm-hmm. But only on the tail end. Yeah. It's not on the attack. But I think it's a, I think it's a very clean blanco. I do too. I I I, I want to say that. Um, and for the price. You know what? Are, what are we? What are we seeing in in, in Los Angeles? Because it's not, it's it's actually quite reasonable, if I'm not mistaken. No, I haven't researched this one yet. I'm surprised with that because we don't have we don't go out and buy skills. Well, the other thing too is you know a lot of these we always ask for POS and and on on many occasions we we don't get it. You know we don't it doesn't get emailed to us or it doesn't come with the the shipments, and right. you know people and. 
Yeah, and of course this is Cabo Wabo. It's been it it now is a a it's it's a prominent brand. You can find it everywhere. Yeah, it's, um, a, sta it's a staple of the marketplace. Yes, yes, it, it has it has a place now in on, on the shelves. Um, Sammy has has long since moved, and I guess he's doing rum now, which yeah. is which is the next I think the next uh, the next logical progression. Yeah, you know rum. There's a there's a there's a rum renaissance going on apparently. Mm. Price point is, uh, um, for example, Bevmo. Bevmo the Blanco, uh, thirty bucks. Yeah. Well, regular forty. It's it's right there where it needs to be. I think I think it's an extremely versatile tequila, you know. Great by itself, great on the rocks, great on a cocktail. I think it's got a real nice body for for a uh, margarita. I think it'd be a refreshing Paloma, honestly. Paloma, yeah, I agree. This is a great distillery, folks. It's got it's got pedigree. It has a it has a a, a a a rather good history. There's lots of nice pictures out there. I have several. Alex has several. I'm sure you can find a few online. I remember uh, when the Blue Agave uh, Group first went to San Nicolas, uh, we had a, a gentleman who was a, a prominent uh, collector, but a, an avid photographer. And he's got some great pictures of, of the front door. And these are huge wooden doors. And they have, they have a, an iron knocker that's upside down. It's the hand like this. And when you, when you want the, you know, when you come to the front door, you, you, you slam the knocker against the wood. It's got these old wooden church it church doors you know and it's yeah. it's just um it's, it really if you get a chance to go it, it it's a wonderful distillery you know my, my favorite is the glass walls in the factory yeah where you can climb up and then look out and actually see the the blue agave field with the red soil yes uh it's well, you know, it's right out in front of the distillery is where where that where it starts. I have several pictures of, of agave, and, and those agave were huge. Alex, they they grew, they grow big in that iron oxide in that red clay. They just and I and I uh, the second time I was there, it was it was during the rainy season, but they were harvesting, and so I was out, you know, on the on the on the back forty, <laughs> with these himalores and the trucks and stuff. And I gotta tell you, the the size of the agave that they get, um, the sugar content, they, they were doing all kinds of things correctly when when you know when um, when they were still Espolón, and now that now that we're with Campari, I think I don't think the honestly, Alex, I I want to say this is this is I want to vote this as most improved, most improved tequila. I think is is Cabo Wabo, and well, I, everything that's come out of this distillery, I've really enjoyed. Uh, it's one of those things that if you follow if you follow the numbers, which is smart. If you like a, a particular tequila coming out of a of a of a, of a certain distillery, mm -hmm. you usually will enjoy everything coming out of there because they're very they're very similar. Uh, and I think this is one of those. Yeah. Uh, you know, those changes it's gone through. I think it's still it's still a great tequila. I I do too, and it's a and it's a it's a it's a fairly large factory also. Um, so you know they can handle the, the the demand, and and it was it was a smart investment by Campari to to purchase the distillery, and and for the previous owner, and I forget what his name is because several people have actually met him, uh, the, the the past owner of of San Nicolas, but I, I hear I heard wonderful things about him as well when he when he actually owned the distillery, so to have built something that large, yeah, uh, I actually met him. Um, Do you remember what his name is? What, you know, what was his name? I have to dig it up. Okay. Uh, he, interestingly, he also came out to LA one time, and I had a chance to have dinner with him and, and some others. I, I have to dig it up and see. Yeah, I know somebody's going to come up with it faster than we would, but uh, yeah, real nice, uh, uh, nice, nice guy from from what I from what I. All reports say the same thing. Everybody who's ever met him say he was a great guy. So, anyway, that's our take on Cabo Wabo Blanco. What's that? Kudos to Yes, absolutely. I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio. 
I'm Alex Perez. You were watching Sipping Off the Cup on tequila, and as always, sip wisely.